Hello and welcome everybody. Another day, another modern stream here. Last modern streamer <laughs> available in Twitch, so <clears throat> welcome. Uh, we're going to <clears throat> excuse me. We're going to be playing some uh, some amulet today. This is what I what I uh, what I like to call no nonsense amulet, um, which is basically the list that I would consider to be, aka the most optimal uh, for. <clears throat> for the the current uh, metagame. Uh, but before we do so, uh, hello Jeff Ted, how you doing? Uh, before we do so, I would like to talk about uh, the events that happened this weekend. Uh, for those of you that are not aware, uh, we had the SCG uh, Invitational, and uh, basically it's a split tournament, it was half modern, half pioneer. And this is uh, what the top, uh, the top eight looked like, and we actually had one amulet representative right there, finishing on the top four. Sam Birkenbeil uh, kicked ass all weekend, playing playing the deck and playing also a, a red green aggro deck in Pioneer. Uh, but let's talk about what's relevant though. Uh, this is the list that Sam uh, was playing. He said he literally did no testing at all, and he basically just <laughs> just uh, watched the stream, and then that was that was his testing. Uh, but uh, I really like about uh, what Sam was doing is the fact that he did what I always tell everybody to do: meta game, meta game. Per per basically, prepare your deck for the meta game that you expect. And we can see here uh, very, very clearly that um, the, the the main deck is sp very straightforward. It's basically what we've what we've been playing here on stream. In fact, it's going to be the same main deck that we that we were playing on stream. Plus one breeding pool, minus one gemstone mine. That's uh, the only change that we're going to have going on. Second Ghoul Turf over Golgari Rod Farmer. That's that's pretty relevant. It's it's barely worth mentioning. Uh, but everything else is basically the same main deck. Main deck is, is awesome. Now, when we go to the sideboard, this right here, this is smart, people. This is smart. <laughs> hey, how you doing, Sam? Um, this is so smart. Everybody is playing Ursa, the Yoko Ursa deck in the SEG Tour. Everybody in the Lotus Box is playing it. Everybody that... I drag his ass in here, nice, Marcus. Uh, everybody is just so high on the Urso Oko deck, and for good reason. I think that the deck is pretty, pretty absurd. Uh, but what did Sam do? Meta game. Played. <laughs> Damn, Restmaster! Thank you so much for that subscription. Welcome back to the Prime Time Stronghold. Thank you for being here. Really appreciate your continued support. Um, SSG Modern Events, yeah, Mystic Gods was very good. Exactly, everybody is playing Ursa. You don't see this in Moto. In fact, I don't think I played against Ursa on stream in like two weeks or something. Everybody's playing Shadow in Magic Online. But in the, um, in the, SCG events, everybody is playing Ursa because of the uh, the Lotus Box people. Those are the guys that actually kind of broke modern with the Ursa deck. So everybody is jamming Ursa. If you see this event, uh, Simic Ursa, Simic Ursa, Simic Ursa. We, we see all the... Th there's also a bunch of Death Shadows. <laughs> but uh, but everybody is, is playing the Ursa decks. And I, I imagine, I mean, we can ask Sam here. How many times did you face Ursa, Sam? How many times did you play against the deck? Uh, because I think that this is very smart. You know, he changed his deck and he tuned it to uh, to play against the metagame that he expected. I never have to beat Lotus Book Guys on Ursa, I think, twice. Yeah, exactly. So he played twice and he played uh, Mystical Dispute. In fact, one of those times was against Edgar, which kind of broke my heart a little bit because it's, uh, it, it's, it's not a secret that I'm, I'm a big, big fan of, of Ed Edgar Magaliesh. And being one of the very few people in the world who can actually somewhat pronounce his last name properly. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, he actually beat Edgar on, on stream in round 15. Um, and, you know, Mystical Dispute is, is just insane in that matchup. So, 
Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very smart that he actually went ahead and he cut some of the cards that are a little bit on the irrelevant side, Bailoth. He went down to only one Bailoth and napped one Colossus, which is the card that you want in the Grixis Shadow matchup. If he was not expecting to face Burn, then the second Bailoth is not as good. If you're playing in Moto, you're going to face Burn multiple times. In fact, we have uh, here on stream. But if you don't expect to face as many burn players, then you can probably go down to one Colossus um, and one Bailoth and just play one Colossus instead. You know, these are the kind of changes that I always tell I always tell you to, you need to do. Uh, you need to make these changes and you need to not only just grab a random 75 that you that you see posted, because you know, like maybe uh, you know for example, you know, every, for I don't know why, but everybody says that, like in 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 Texas, for example, whenever there's an event in Dallas or something, there's like three burn players in the top eight. So if you're planning on playing an event in Texas, maybe you want to actually play the second Bayloth. You know, these are the kind of changes that you need to make in order to succeed. And uh, and Sam was beautifully paid off with this uh, this top uh, top eight appearance. I am from Texas and can confirm. Yeah, there you go. So these are the changes that you need to make if you want to succeed. And that is the difference between, you know, uh, people that just like randomly grab the deck and just hope to do well with it with a little bit of luck and people who actually put in the work and think about what, you know, how to best succeed in the metagame. And then they end up being rewarded. So awesome. <laughs> Some literally leaves with burn players. Uh, amazing job, Sam! Congratulations again on your on your top eight uh, appearance. Uh, you you played you played very well all weekend, and yeah, you very very well deserved uh, top eight appearance here. I I really like your list for the meta game that you were expecting, and I'm I'm very happy that it paid off. Oh, thank you, Sam! Yeah, for sure, for sure. You 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 really you really did an amazing job, and and it's it's really it makes me happy, you know, when people are smart and they put in the work and they you know they just think about about stuff, and then they get paid off. It, it just it, it it feels awesome. Like this is why I was so happy when when uh, when I was playing GP Vegas because you know we made changes. Uh, to to fit the meta game that we expected, and boom, we had so many amulet players doing well in the event when you know Hogak was very clearly way ahead of everything else. Uh, but somehow, all the amulet players were finding success as well because we were tuning our decks in order to in order to beat the expected meta game, and that's why we we were succeeding. So that is what I always what I always try to to encourage people to do and what people oftentimes don't <laughs> don't really don't, don't really pay attention when, when I say it. I play one blast and one explosives to fix the session and I partially fix exactly. <clears throat> exactly. So uh, we're gonna actually we're gonna talk about that in a second. So glad that you brought that up, Guru. We're gonna talk about that in a second when we talk about the, the magic the modern challenge. <clears throat> Got any recommendations for Cyber Russia for Magic Fest Columbus this weekend. Um I honestly am not familiar. Like I'm not, I'm not familiar with the Ohio metagame. Um, I, I'm clearly not from Ohio and <laughs> nowhere near Ohio, so <laughs> I can't really help you there. But yeah, um, but, but yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, what are the decks? If you know what what uh, what decks you expect to face, I can tell you which cards. In fact, little little plug. I have a Patreon that I put together. Where uh, one of the exclusive perks is I'm creating a video series that is called Amulet Deep Dives. And we talk about, uh, the idea is I, I talk about specific matchups and how to approach them from the Amulet side. I think it's very, very cool. Uh, I did two today. I'm going to do one more uh, later today, which I'm going to update um, during, um, during this week. And so I, I did one about uh, the Simic Ursa matchup, one about the Burn matchup, and today I'm going to make one about the Grixis Shadow matchup, which are, of course, very important matchups to talk about. Two times I was in Ohio for an event. It was a big mana cesspool. Okay, yeah, so that that is definitely one the one that I want to cover, uh, Tron. I think that, that Tron and Eldrassi Tron, uh, particularly Eldrassi Tron, is crazy popular right now. So I think it's one that I want to make sure that I, that I cover in the Deep Dive series. 
We have time to think, not play. So my decks are usually tuned very well in theory. In practice, it doesn't like up very time. <laughs> the red green sideboard was the real magic of the list. Ethers here, Harvest, Harvester was insane. Yeah, I can see that. I actually tried. I built, I built your pioneer deck, and I played it through a league. It was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, there we go. This is this is what Sam played in the in the event. Um, the only thing that I thought about this deck is I want more glory bringers. This card is so sick in the meta game right now, and this card is busted. I actually posted a, a picture on Twitter where I had a questing beast that I at, that I um, I put an ember cleave on, and it, it just felt unfair. <laughs> Death touch double strike trample is it's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good. All right, back to modern. All right, so let's talk about the online events, and this is when things are going to become a little bit more interesting. So, list number one. This is Demanche. It got ninth place. Actually, uh, they posted on on the Discord, and apparently they they um, they started like five and zero or something, and then they lost a couple, and then they finished ninth. Uh, tied uh, with like uh, the seventh, I think, and but the the, the tiebreakers were a little bit worse, so that that's why they they were left only one slot away from the top eight. Feels bad, man. And yeah, so what we have here is basically the non the no nonsense amulet list that we're that we're talking about today, uh, card for card, with the exception of four gemstones instead of two breeding pool. And two gemstones. This is, this is something that I've talked about on stream, so I'm not gonna go uh, too deep into it because um, I think that you know I've talked about I, I talked about how I think that this is the best line in the deck by by a fair margin. So uh, I, you you guys don't need to hear me talk talk about the wonders of gest gemstone mine anymore. Uh, but yeah, I I love this list. I think it's very very good in an open meta. In fact, I actually played a league uh, while I was in San Diego this weekend, and I just easily five would because uh, the list is awesome. It's very very good. <laughs> so um, strongly recommend this list that, that we're that uh, if you want to play some 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 amulet in moto. Uh, here we go. This is uh, this actually does have a couple of changes, and we're gonna go over over them real quick. Uh, we have the same main deck, twenty nine lands. This time we actually do have the two burning bull, two gemstone mine split, and we have two gruel turf, uh, one sanctuary instead of the Golgari rot farm, uh, which I think it's perfectly fine. But everything else in the main deck is is, is just the same. Uh, here we actually do have one mystical dispute over the second explosives. And a second tile tracker over the second bail off. Um, about the mystical dispute, I think that this card is very, very good and probably is something that I would uh, consider playing a little bit more strongly in a competitive event because I think that people are more likely to uh, to be playing um, to be playing the Orso deck in a competitive event, especially because you have like the the grinders. Like for example, Canister always plays the uh, the, the weekend challenges and stuff or PTQs or whatever and he doesn't really play leagues anymore so you're you're not as likely to find uh, the, the the top tier players and like the the Urs the simic Ursa decks in the leagues while you're actually way more likely to find them in the in the challenges and stuff so uh, you can probably uh, fit like one or two mystical disputes in the side world of your amulet deck um, for for the weekend challenges and, and cars like engineered explosives become a little bit less of a necessity uh, when when those decks are the ones that you're you're expecting to face. Engineered explosive is a fine card against the Ursa matchup, but it's definitely not the end all be all. That you know, mystical dispute is just significantly better, uh, I believe, in in the Ursa matchup specifically. So I think that's a fine change, and we see the same thing uh, here with the Bayloth and the Tracker. You don't really see as, as much burn in the you don't really see as much burn in the in the uh, challenge in the weekend events, uh, while you see a ton of burn and mono red prowess in the in the leagues. So that is definitely another po uh, potential change. Tyler Striker, of course, shines against uh, against Ursa. In Man 72 with that subscription, welcome back to the Prime Time Strong for seven months in a row. Thank you so much for the continued support, man. Um, so yeah, so. Tyler Striker uh, really shines against like the Ursa decks. It's actually very, very good against. Uh, personally, I think it's it's quite good against Grixis Shadow. 
Um, I don't think like if I had like two or three trackers, maybe like they, the more that you play, it's, it, it becomes worse. But I actually played I one of the matches that I played over the weekend, which I ended up winning, was I really suspected my opponent had disdainful stroke and stubborn denial. So uh, they know I I, I they, they know that I don't have cavern because they have perfect information because of a thought is from the previous turn. And I packed with uh, with five mana in play. And my opponent uh, doesn't stub the the pact, even though they had an angler in play, because they know that I don't have a cavern. And I go and I fetch the tracker, which plays her under the stainful stroke, and I make two land drops. The, the tracker becomes a 5-4. Five, a five, and now I'm trading with their angler, so they can't attack anymore. Uh, it, it, it was great. Like, I think a tracker is actually very, very good in the in the Grixis Shadow matchup. So playing a second copy is is not something that uh, that surprises me a lot. However, again, in the open in the open uh, moto meta, I rather have access to obstinate bailout, and because I I expect to face shadow, you will see that in my cyber we actually are making room for uh, the chameleon colossus in here, because I I, I, I do respect the, the shadow matchup a lot. Uh, we have one more list. Let me find it real quick. Doo -doo -doo. Yeah, here we go. No, this is not it. Oh yeah, this is it. Yeah, so this one's actually super spicy. <laughs> what do you think about the No Amulet deck in the top 32 of modern MTGO PTQ? Uh, I mean, I think it, it is kind of like... It's gonna happen, right? Like, there's so many decks in modern, so it's not crazy that, you know, if people are playing other events or, or something like that, it's just like, it's, it's not crazy for no amulet decks to be in a top eight. I, in, in, fa in fact, I think it's very it's very reasonable because the deck. I think the deck is probably the best deck still not being played enough in the format. I think that amulet is still grossly underplayed, especially because a bunch of the amulet gurus, including Edgar, for example, um, they have moved on to the Simic Ursa deck. So before you had like those guys uh, consistently representing Amulet in the top tables, and now you don't even have them. And so I, yeah, I think that I think that I'm I'm trying to make my part for the deck to not be as underplayed as it it is, but it just. It, it always is. <laughs> and I don't think that I can do like, much more than I currently am doing in order to, to stop that from happening. Um, it's just like people... Th there's, there's multiple things. First of all, when people try it out, they do lose a lot. Um, pretty sure even Dales was playing Norse at this point. Yeah, th there you go. Exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, so I think that the deck is very, very good. But like people are still getting afraid about how hard the deck is and you know they just don't even pick it up or when they do pick it up they underestimate it and they they just lose <laughs> so so they lose so they don't continue playing it and they give up on it so it's like it's one of those decks that is kind of like doomed to be consistently and consistently underplayed i guess uh but you know the people that are actually you know playing it it's they they do well, so I don't know. <clears throat> so I, I I mean it's it's just it's just the way it is. I'm I'm so I'm never surprised when an amulet deck doesn't top eight an event or something like that, uh, because it's just it's just the nature of the deck kind of to to an extent, and just like the the reluctancy that people feel towards picking it up. And when they when they do very often they do find success. So we're, we're, we still have two more lists to talk about. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm I'm never like crazy surprised when when an amulet this doesn't top eight or anything. It's just like it's just fine. It's just something that's gonna happen. How do you feel about the Ursa matchup and Grixis Shadow matchup? The two other two best decks. I think that the Ursa matchup. Is, I'm I'm very comfortable with my list with the Ursa matchup. I think it's actually very good. Uh, the Simic Ursa that is. Uh, I think that the Thopter Sword Ursa it's even, though I feel slightly favored. And then I feel like the, the Ascendancy Ursa, the Emery combo deck, I think that one is actually very bad. And as far as the Grixie Shadow matchup, I think that it's it's close. And it comes to uh, it comes more 
It is more about your opponent's draw than your own draw. Basically, if your opponent is very good at drawing Timur Battle Rage, you're going to struggle. And if they don't draw Timur Battle Rage uh, very often, then you're probably going to win. Like, Timur Battle Rage is by far the most important card in the matchup. Um, so... So yeah, that, that those are my thoughts. But I I've been I've been I mean you, you can check out the stream. Like I played against Wixie Shadow so many times in the past like two weeks or something. Uh, in, in even in the list that I in the in the league that I five owed over the weekend, uh, which was off stream of course, I, I played against Shadow twice and I beat it twice. So it's it's definitely beatable. But I don't feel favored, basically. That th those are my thoughts on that matchup. Uh, okay, so Coming to the, the craziest and spiciest list uh, from the weekend. So, uh, this is the only Karn list. I continue saying this. Karn, still good. <laughs> the fact that Once Upon a Time got printed did not make Karn bad. So, don't think that Karn is bad, because he's not. He's still very good. You can still very easily win with Karn. Uh, however, uh, Karn, I think, is very good against Ursa. In fact, we saw that this weekend, right? Like uh, all of the all of the Lotus Box people were playing Karn in their Ursa decks, in their Simic Ursa decks. <laughs> MTG and Bagels, thank you so much for the sub. But if, even if you can't check out the stream, you can, you f hopefully can check out the, the YouTube vids afterwards. So, but thank you so much for the tier one sub. Welcome back to the Prime Time Stronghold. Thank you for the support. Um, so yeah, so as I was saying. Um, the the Lotus Box people even play the Karn in their Simic Ursa decks in order to assess the mirror match, right? So uh, clearly Karn is not bad. It, in fact, it's it's great right now. However, uh, the problem with Karn is that it's a four mana card that gets really wrecked by Stubborn Denial. Uh, you don't want to be spending four mana to play a card and then your opponent just stops it for one mana. That's like such a massive tempo swing. Uh, when your opponent stops your pact, right, you, you spend zero mana and your opponent spent one. So you end up at a, at a mana advantage that is pretty significant. Even when, they're stab your, when they stop your amulet, it's the same thing, right? You spend one mana, they spend one mana, you're fine. When you spend four mana and your turn and your opponent was able to like, you know, spend one mana to play their angler, and then just only one mana to stop your Karn. Uh, it feels real bad, and you're very likely going to lose that game. Uh, so uh, Karn definitely pretty bad in the Grixis Shadow matchup. Yes, you can minus and you can go get... <gasps> There's no Worm Coil here. There's no Worm Coil. Wow, so this player is choosing to go with Batter Skull over Worm Coil. Big disagree with that, uh, but yeah. Quinoc with the with the tier one sub. Welcome back to the prime time stronghold. Thank you so much. Uh, sorry if you answered this already, but what do you think about the legacy bans? Maybe you can do. It. Oh yeah, Trex. I'm 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 gonna go. I'm gonna get into that. We haven't talked about bannings yet, uh, but I'm I'm super excited. You you have no idea how excited I am about about that banning. Uh, I actually posted about it earlier today. Uh, big, big fan of that banning. Uh, all right, so what we have here is actually a very, very mid-rangey version of Amulet, which I find super, super interesting, actually. Um, so basically what we have is Karn, and we have like a very big creature package with Corsair Crucifix and Walking Ballista, which uh, I, find, I find kind of amusing, honestly. Um, we also have Colony, and... The reason why I actually do like this, and the 4 Explorer, the reason why I actually do like this is because all of this works with Karn. Um, so what I what I really like about uh, this list from Ajani89 is that uh, they are... They know what they're about. <laughs> uh, they know what they're about, and they are about, uh, they are about uh, the mid-range plan. They are about trying to play Karn ahead of schedule and trying to ride Karn to victory. And uh, I like that. I like that. Uh, I think that this is uh, th this list overall just makes a ton of sense. Uh, first of all, we have well the Karns obviously, but uh, Corsair is very good at protecting Karn because it just blocks it, 
And it's also very good at uh, gaining life as well in order to prolong the game. Explore also works very, very well with Karn, allowing you to more consistently play Karn on turn 3, while also working very good with Corsair, because it, it gives you a fresh draw off the top, which you can hopefully uh, find another land on the top for, to play with the Corsair. So uh, there's, uh, there's clearly a ton of synergy right there. Um, so... Colony Garden, same thing, also protects the Karn. Uh, Blast Zone. This is a card that I don't like, but that being said, right now, the popularity of Death Shadow is basically unprecedented, and I think that right now it is the moment where it's actually justifiable to play to play Blast Zone as one of your lands. I don't like... I don't like that this player is only playing 28 lands. Even with Explore, like, I'm even more incentivized to want to go up to 29, so I, I would probably just cut the Walking Ballista for the 29th land. That's, like, the, the, only, op the only change that seems... Uh, that I would be... Uh, I, I would want to give a shot to. Um, because we already tried Explore right here on stream with 29 lands, and we still miss land drops. So every time Explore doesn't actually net you that extra land... It's just a terrible card. So I think that if you want to play this land, you really want to maximize on explorers, and you want to and you want to probably play uh, play a 29th land. Um, also, untapped lands are uh, kind of at a premium. We're choosing to play field. We're choosing to play Carly Garden. We're choosing to play Bojuki Bob. All of these cards in the main deck are. Every ETB tap land that you're playing is making you less likely to play Karn on turn three. So that is something that I'm I'm actually not a big fan of. Uh, from this list, so that is even more of a reason to want to go up to 29 lands and probably play... I mean, I would probably just play another Gemstone Mine. Like, two Gemstone Mines is just sacrilege. Two Gemstone Mines without Castle? Yeah, I, I don't like this at all. Play four. If you're not playing if you're not playing Castle and you're not playing four Gemstone Mines, you're, you're, you're just wrong. You're just making a mistake there. So I would definitely go up to four Gemstone Mines here. 100%. And I would make... I would take out the Walking Ballista and probably the Blast Zone. I don't think I want Blast Zone in the main deck. Uh, those are the two changes that I would make from this list. I would probably play the Blast Zone in the sideboard if, if I really wanted to, but but yeah. Um, so, besides that, I really like the way that this, that this list is constructed um, because of the reasons that I stated above. I think, I think that this list is going to play the mid-range game better than the Once Upon a Time lists uh, are, are able to. So, like, with this list, you really want to be paired against uh, John. Um, maybe not Grixie Shadow because of the Karns, but, like, I imagine that Paul Sire will just side out all the Karns and you bring in, like, your your uh, your nice little... <laughs> your nice little uh, uh, haymakers from the sideboard... Even though there's not that many here, but that's still. Uh, once you sub, link your Discord to your Twitch, then wait a few hours. Oh yeah, that's uh, that's how you can get a cyborg guide, uh, Quinoc. But but yeah, so that goes up with, with the um, with the main deck. Now talking about the wishboard, I think that this person is really overdoing it with the wishboard. I'm not a big fan of going this deep. And even the cards that they are choosing to play are cards that I don't think I would play because I don't think they are worth it. Uh, we do have the Explosives, we do have the Lattice, um, and we do have the Python Needle. These are the three cards that I really like about this. However, Relic of Progenitors, I, I talked extensively about why I think that Tomor's Crypt is, is like a strictly superior card, especially if you're playing the Karn package. Um, I think that... It, this should not be here. This should be a Tormod script. I think it's significantly better than Relic at what it does. So definitely want to be doing this. Uh, Batter Skull. I think it, it's a cool. It's a cool card if you don't have a Worm Coil. And um, this is if, if if I for whatever reason I did not own a Worm Coil or whatever, uh, then I would definitely play Batter Skull instead. Uh, but I think that Worm Coil is significantly better at doing the job that Batter Skull is doing. Um, especially against Grixie Shadow, which we were talking about uh, a second ago, right? Like if you game one. And you know, some somehow your car gets through, and you minus because you want to get your value, and you get your batter skull, and then <laughs> next turn, next turn your car dies, and your opponent top decked a freaking <laughs> a freaking stub, and they stub your batter skull. Feels it's gonna feel really bad, especially because if you if you were able to play the the worm coil, you would basically just win on the spot. 
Uh, then we have Golos. Uh, I don't like this card, like, at all. I think that I, I get what it's trying to do. I get what Golos is trying to do, but I think that if you want to do the Golos thing, you are going to be strictly in a better position if you just get, uh, like, um, um, the land, uh, Darksteel Citadel. Um, so that is, that is definitely a thing that I don't like at all. Uh, basically the idea for Karn is that you bridge the gap towards the Titan, but, uh, like you're bridging the gap through a time walk, like you're time walk, basically time walking yourself because you're spending five mana to play like basically any relevant creature. I am not a, not a fan at all of this card in the sideboard, in the wish package. Um, I don't think it does. I mean, I, I think there's better ways to do the thing that you kind of want Golos to do, you know? Uh, I think you'd rather use spend your mana in a different way uh, instead of just playing an, an irrelevant creature. Uh, but, but yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I already talked about uh, why I prefer Raminap over Crucible, but Crucible is just fine. It's, it's just a fine card. And Snare Bridge, I already explained, like, it's it doesn't just do the... Th in, in my experience, at least, it just doesn't do the thing that you want it to do. Uh, it just... Like, it's really hard to empty your hand when you're playing a deck that has multiple 4-mana cards, multiple 6-mana cards. Uh, you have uh, cards like Summoner's Pack that effectively time walk you. You're playing Counter Magic, and you're also playing Bounce Lands. That's like so many things that make your, your Ensnare Bridge basically unplayable. So, not a fan of Ensnare Bridge at all. Hornet Queen, I think, is just a card that doesn't do anything in the metagame. Like, Hornet Queen D was great in the in the Humans metagame, in the Spirits metagame. Those decks have, have basically just banished from, from existence in the modern format. So, I think that Hornet Queen is just, like, not worth a slot. And for the decks that you do want this kind of effect... Uh, just the second field of the dead just does this thing except better. So uh, not a fan at all of the Hornet Queen in the sideboard. Uh, but, you know, it's, again, it's a card that has its place. It still has its matchups where it's good. That uh, That is John, uh, Grixis Shadow and stuff. You, I mean, if, if it's in your sideboard, you would still bring it in. I don't think it's very good. Overall, I mean. I don't think it's very good overall in the meta. Uh, Red Cup opportunities already talked about. Uh, Spellskite. This is just a big question mark for me. I I have no idea why, th why this person has two copies of Spell's Guide. I would really like, uh, you know, if, if they are on stream or if, if any of you know uh, a Jenny 89 if, uh, you know, they could explain why they are playing two Spell's Guides in the cyber, because this is just baffling to me. I have no idea what you want. Not only why you would want a Spell's Guide right now, but also what you would want too. Uh, like, I, I just don't understand this. Um... Yeah, I, I honestly have no idea. <laughs> sad sad that I, I really cannot make sense of this. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just... Maybe you can redirect your Oko activation towards a spell sky instead of a Titan. I don't know. Uh, it seems very, very not worth it. Very not worth it. I, I don't know. I might be I might be confused. Um, two of Braids, fine card. I don't think it's a meta for it, but it, it's definitely a fine card. And Rurik Thar, I don't like this card. <laughs> I, I really don't like this card in the current meta game. Uh, for a second there with the Ursa P.O. decks, uh, when that those were a thing, um, I was like, eh, maybe Rurik does something against like the, the Ursa and the Emery decks and... I don't know. Uh, I it just like right now it's just not gone. Why is the good metal coding bad? Because that's not we, what we are about to. We are not about um, this deck doesn't use Karn really as a lock piece unless it's a hundred percent lock piece, right? Like you're playing the one of lattice because there are some scenarios that are going to be pretty random, you know, where you just you just Karn minus for Lattice, and you just play it, and you just lock the game out. Uh, that sometimes happens. Uh, but usually, the way that this uh, that Amulet uses Karn is as a value engine slash distraction. Uh, the way that you win games in the Karn version of the deck is you play Karn, you get some value, you act like you want to protect it, and your opponent spends a ton of resources to get to get rid of it. Maybe you minus for a worm call, so now your opponent has to read a, uh, to deal with a worm call. But in the end, you are still killing them with a Titan. You're very rarely winning the game with Karn, the Great Creator. 
So because that is not the plan and because you you don't really want to like be plusing your Karn very often. Um, that's why Liquid Metal Cody just doesn't do the thing. It's just, it's just awkward. Like I, I cannot really remember more than a couple of very random situations where I'm like, mm, I really wish I had Liquid Metal Cody in my sideboard. In fact, when I tested it, I'm like, what is this thing doing here? <laughs> I would play like multiple leagues in a row and just like never wanted to to get a Liquid Metal Coding ever. Um, Liquid Metal Karn is better in decks like a Drassitron, which sometimes just like play a Karn and then like on the next turn they only have access to five mana or, or only four mana or something. Or they are they get actual Tron and they can play Karn plus two mana to Liquid Metal Coding and like gain one turn that way. But that's not the way that uh, the Karn plays out uh, with um, in, in the context of Amulet. So that is... That is why you, you don't really see liquid. Sometimes you see liquid metal coding doing uh, in, in some cyborgs and stuff, uh, but it's not. I I never thought it to be good. Uh, but yeah, so that's that's uh, what I wanted to talk about this list, which I I kind of like. Again, I think that it's it's very, it's at least the the main deck is. It's it, it makes sense why it's built this way. Again, I, there there were a couple of changes that I would make, uh, but I still think it's pretty interesting. The sideboard I am pretty perplexed about. I I think it's there, there's a lot of wasted, uh, wasted air in the sideboard, which I don't like. Uh, but but yeah, I mean, uh, Jenny eighty nine got the uh, top thirty two in the challenge, which is not no small feat. So congratulations to them. Um, last list of the weekend. Uh, we have an PTQ winner, Daryl Nace Winter. Sorry if I'm destroying your your last name, uh, but yeah. So this was uh, the PTQ that was held at uh, SCG Con, and it was won by Amulet. Um, it's an interesting list. It seems like it's a little bit delayed. Basically, there are a couple of things that I like. Seems like uh, Daryl. Uh, is is a seasoned amulet player that maybe for like a couple of weeks or something just didn't watch, <laughs> didn't watch like any updated content and they are playing. Like, I I don't know why you would like walking ballista in the main deck seems terrible right now. It seems so bad. What do I think of card with no steerings? I think it's fine uh, because you're playing for explorers. If you're playing for explorers, I think not playing steerings actually makes no ma makes uh, makes sense because again we're trying to play Karn ahead of schedule, right? And uh, explore does that helps you achieve that. Could I have your amulet box with all the random cards that are good in amulet but not good right now? Exactly, Trex. That's that's what the amulet box is about. So how are going the Hornet Queen? I like the card a lot, but it's unfortunately not good enough. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they, they do have Broco. Also, they have Rurik, which, again, I already explained why I don't think this card is very good right now. Yeah, but, like, only one castle is... I don't know, it's kind of weird. I feel like if... Like, one castle just doesn't make any sense to me. I feel like if you want to play castle and you don't want to play two, I would be closer to playing three than to playing one. Because just having it as a one-off, it just makes no sense. Like, you naturally want to draw the castle. And if you only have one, you're not very likely to draw the castle. Like you're, you're never transmuting for a castle, right? You're never, you're never uh, fetching it with a prime time trigger. You're only naturally drawing it and then using it because you naturally drew it. So it's good because you naturally, you can naturally draw it. So just playing it as a one-off makes no sense to me. So I don't know what what there what was trying to do there. Uh, it, this was a paper tournament, so this could also be a card availability issue. So I'm not going to to discard that as well. But uh, but yeah, I I mean, I don't think I would ever play just one castle. It just it just doesn't make no sense, right? Like that's there's the reason why you play castle. It's a different one. Hey, Sushi, how you doing? So, uh, yeah, uh, besides that, the main deck is is pretty much what we've been playing, except minus one land, plus one walking ballista. Again, I don't think this card is very good right now, so I wouldn't play it, and I'd much rather have access to the 29th land. I've been actually loving the 29th land in, in the lists that I've been playing. It's also, like, it's a very easy swap for the second castle, so that's also very, very easy to fix. 
Uh, but yeah, the, the main deck is pretty straightforward, just like only four basics. Sergio, thank you so much for that Twitch from sub. Welcome back to the primetime stronghold, my friend. Whoops. Five. Fifth sub of the day. Um, so, yeah, besides that, uh, the list is pretty pretty straightforward. Not much to talk about uh, with it. Only, huh, I'm just noticing that only playing eight bounce lands. Huh. Eight bounce lands with only one castle. Only three basics. Hmm. I guess that they really wanted to feed the colony. That's like the only explanation that I can find. So if I wanted to feed the colony, I would probably do something similar. So I would play, um, like, I would just like take out one of my basic forests to feed the colony. I don't have, haven't really felt the necessity to feed colony lately. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, and here, yeah, when we go to the sideboard, we have Hornet Queen here. Again, I already explained why I don't think this card is very good. Uh, only one Bailoth, which kind of makes sense because we have two Okos. Um, Bailoth and Oko are going to be insane in very similar matchups, so they are kind of like replacing each other. However, we only have one, four, eight, eleven blue sources. Yeah, we're, we're, we're probably not casting Oko on turn 2 very often, huh? <laughs> not gonna happen often. Uh, but I've been releasing really it to my composition with 7 bounce lands and 2 castles, but that might be a trap. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could do that. If you're playing 2 castles, it's... Yeah, I don't know about 7 bounce lands. 7 does seem like a little bit too... It just makes... Only seven bounce lands just makes your amulet so much worse, though. So I I don't think I would wanna I would gonna go there. I don't know. And yeah, so yeah, Oko is the last the last uh, unique thing from this from this list really. Um, we we have like Hornet Queen, we have like the Dismembers. One is Efus Stroke, one Negate. We have this this uh, split there, but it it's fine. Uh, but yeah, uh, this list, only one explosives in the sideboard. Yeah, even that, I feel like I would, instead of the Ballista, I would rather play a second explosives. If I, if like, you really don't want to play 29 lands for whatever reason. I don't know. But yeah, so we have a... Uh, Daryl is going to be going to the the PT, the, the player's tour now. Uh, gonna be going to the player's tour thanks to thanks to Amulet, so that's that's very cool. Congratulations to Daryl. Uh, but yeah, so that's gonna be it about the deck list conversations. Um, let's move on to our deck list. So this is my current no-nonsense list for those of you. Uh, what do you think about Oko on the side? I don't think it's very good. Uh, I I don't think it does what you what you need your cards to do. Uh, so I I would rather not. Play, I, I I would rather play like real cards. Like I'd rather play a Force of Vigor and an Obstinate Bailoth in my sideboard instead of two Okos. Really like the second mainboard EE, which is why I'm personally trying to see if I can find a 28 land build that I feel good about. Yeah, I I've been so happy with 29 lands. Honestly, like you can probably just cut a second basic, but. You, you can cut a fourth basic, sorry. And you can play an explosives here. I wouldn't. I think that, like, this... The 29 lands... I've been super happy with 29, 29 lands, basically. I feel like I very rarely uh, miss my land drops, which has felt very, very nice. Of course, seems like a great hedge versus Greasy Shadow and greater matchups. Yes, so is Chameleon Colossus, so is Dismember, so is Cavern of Souls and Field of the Dead, and that's my point, so is Starless Tracker, like, you, you, we have so many cards that are good against those decks, uh, that actually don't get uh, wrecked by Stubborn Denial, which Oko does, so... And that's, that's kind of my point with Oko, it doesn't do anything better than cards that we already have, 
that can do the thing in a much more efficient way. I already talked about like why I think Tracker is just better than Oko against Shadow because of what I was talking about earlier. You know, you just like packed, your opponent doesn't stop it because they have a disdainful stroke. You pack for Tracker instead and now all of a sudden you have a, like a, you play a couple of lands with an Asusa or something and now you have a 5-4 Tracker that trades with their Angler that drew you two cards um, and your opponent has a dead disdainful stroke in hand. It's just like... Mr. Hornet Queen discussion, are we off? Yes, we are. I, basically, I am. I think that uh, it was only good against humans and spirits because it blocks the flyer, uh, Mantis Rider, and, well, all of the spirits. Uh, and nowadays, it's Field of the Dead does the Hornet Queen thing, except much better. Moon 29 as well right now. Just keep trying to tinker with it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, trying things out is, is, is always a good habit to to have with your with your primetime lists. But yeah, I mean, why not, right? I always ask I always tell my my drum students that the, the question that you should always ask yourself is when you when you're thinking of something new, the question is always why not? And yeah, sometimes you will like it, sometimes you won't like it. But if you don't try it, how are you gonna know, right? We can listen to cast Oak on turn two, I think. It didn't merit more discussion, but it's been medium when I've tested it. I mean, we actually played it through two leagues. Like, you, you can look in my YouTube archives if you want to see some testing with Oko. And it was just one time, it we cast it twice only, because again, it's just a walker that you can't really tutor for, so you don't draw it, you don't draw it as much. So we cast it twice, and one of the times, we actually it was only good because we drew two copies of it. And we were able to cast them both and gain a ton of life against an aggro deck. And they, I was also lucky enough to cast both of them before my opponent had time to play to play Magus of the Moon. Th those were a lot of ifs in order to make Oko good. And then finally, we uh, on the second one, my opponent just ignored it and killed me anyway. So that that's kind of like the issue with Oko. It's just like it's very like we we cannot really leverage it. Like it's not like we're playing removal spells, so we can like basically play an Oko and protect it, and then just like gain grind value that way. Uh, just like we can't. So it's just like it's just a bad planeswalker for us. It's just like a wor worse card. Solo in one way that you're one sub. Thank you so much for the support. Welcome to the prime time strong Holland. Hello, Shana. Nice to see you here. All right, let's fire up the league. Enough talking. Whoops. My my, my subliminal, you know, like, my 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 mind just wants me to play. Whoops, is this the right list? Yeah. Okay, we good. Um, you know, my my brain just wants me to play to play some legacy. <laughs> All right, now I have learned. Whenever I drink my mate now, check this out. I'm going to mute myself. All right, success. 100% on the second field then. I keep going back and forth on it. It just keeps feeling like it could be a second the E or something else instead. I mean, it could be. Uh, but I have been, I have been uh, moderately happy with it. Uh, yeah, I'm going to keep this. Even if we whiffed on the once upon a time, uh, we're going to probably get to do some cool stuff anyway. Uh, huh. <laughs> this is actually a hilarious once upon a time because we have zero information about what my opponent is on. And if we are playing against Tron, we would like to get the Ghost Squatter here. If we're playing against... A, a, another deck, like a graveyard deck, they would definitely want the Bojuki Bok here. And if we were playing against the midrange deck, we would definitely want the Field of the Dead here. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the Ghost Quarter just because we have, again, we have zero information. And having the Ghost Quarter actually allows me to amulet on one, with, which allows me to like play through a Discord spell or something. Ha! Got him! Mardu Shadow! I'm feeling the natty bog. Yeah, I have not been feeling the natty bog as often anymore, unfortunately. That's an interesting pick. So I guess that means that my opponent has a... Um... Still, like, I'm probably not casting that card anyway. 
Huh. I kind of don't want to play my scout into my opponent's removal spell though, because I don't want to enable their dismember. Do I have to? I think I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna Vesuva their Godless Shrine past the turn. If they have another Discord spell, of course, this, this works very poorly, but... Um, how does the deck evolve if Wizard Bounce once upon a time in Modern? I mean, we just go back to playing what we were playing before. It's, it's very easy. <laughs> so yeah, it, if they ban once upon a time, it shouldn't be a problem whatsoever. Okay, so we're getting scolored here, which is fine. I'd, ra I'd much rather... Nice, Ifeno. Thank you so much for that uh, for that tier 1 sub. Welcome back to the primetime stronghold. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, I'd much rather get uh, get scolored here than, uh, than my opponent being able to... Um, like, you know, like dismember my scout and then play a shadow one too. That would that would have been too much for me to handle, but like them spending two mana to play a two two is perfectly fine. <laughs> Great draws over here. <clears throat> Angrath's Rampage. Okay. That's not, one, that's not one you see every day, huh? Poggers. Um, do I want to play the Bounce this turn? They don't know about this Snow Covered Forest. Yeah, I think I'm just going to play a Bounce now. It makes my field a little bit better, but I'm probably not going to be able to trigger field anyway. So, yeah, that's fine. Had the Nighty both bog both games against <laughs> Shadow the Dredge. Yeah, it feels really good when that happens. But you don't see Dredge as often anymore, unfortunately for us. That's brutal. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Just flying a little bit too much, unfortunately for us. Uh, we're still, like, one Titan away from winning. Is Orso of Stoneblade still viable in Modern? Orso of Stoneblade was never viable in Modern Jingle Bells. Still drinking my coffee, words are hard. <laughs> I know, right? Can be rough. Uh, this is not a lethal shadow, is it? Unless they have like a bolt. Oh, it is a lethal shadow, that's right. 10 plus 2, that's 12. I, for I didn't notice that they, they had that thingy there. All right. Uh, Colossus Tracker. They lost Excavator. Mm, yeah, I guess I kind of do want Excavator. All right, just take that out. Gonna take some of these fellas out. Uh, we want this, we don't want cover. We don't go with Ghost Squatter. Uh, explosives. We shave on some steerings. Yeah, I guess they do have Fulminator Mage, right? So I kind of need the Excavator, even though I don't love it. Man, that kind of sucks. All right, we're going to go with this. We have two gemstones. Yeah, I only have two gemstones. I really miss them sometimes, but like the, the breeding pools have been fine. The two breeding pool, two gemstone split has been okay. 
I do miss some gemstones sometimes though. Oh, that's right. There we go. Uh, why not keep all the packs against the discard deck? Because of Full Minator Mage. Full Minator Mage means that uh, only if you packed for Titan, you're going to be able to reliably uh, pack, uh, be reliably get your green sources. So you can't really packed for a Susa against the Fulminator deck. You can't really pack for Bailoth unless your opponent taps out for it, which is not as likely. So basically, we're adding threats and we would much rather naturally draw the threats than... Uh, we would much rather naturally draw the threats than... Uh, than packing for them. Hmm. Is it keep? This feels like a keep that scoops to Fulminator, and it also scoops to Damping Sphere. Mm, yeah, I think I'm gonna mull. Feels bad to mull against the the Shadow deck, but I feel like I'm gonna have to, and this hand is so much better. Gonna keep this, I'm gonna bottom this. Actually, we're gonna bottom the, the redundant Gemstone. Some that I never play less than fortune. Yeah, but I mean, castle is a, is a good reason to not be playing for gemstones. Let's put it that way. I'm not gonna once upon here because if my opponent has a disc spell, like I'm now they have to choose. Um, hmm. I think I still pass here. My opponent's gonna have scholar, which kind of sucks. Probably gonna take my Asusa. Nothing? Okay, so it wants a bond first. Looking for a land basically here. Hmm. <laughs> so we could get Simic. I think I'm going to get Tolaria here. Or uh, if I get Simic Growth, I play this. My opponent. No, I think I'm just going to get Tolaria. Tolaria just gives me more options. Play T West, play Simic, Bounce, Gemstone. <clears throat> now, Bounce Lands are actually great draws for me because of this Tolaria. And if my opponent doesn't have a Discord spell here, they just lose. So that's also good for us. <laughs> Also, if they fulminator me and I draw an untap, an untap green source, I also win. <clears throat> oh, yeah, this game is over now. I have won this game. Oh, I have like really won this game now. Garrison, Stronghold. I just want to make sure that I have multiple green sources here. I don't want to lose to... It just makes my job much easier. Um, yeah. Classic Shadow Hand with no discard whatsoever. Easy to beat those. <laughs> when your opponent has no discard and no clock either, it's, it's easy mode. I mean, we didn't need Castle. We were, like, easily winning that game, regardless of anything, really. We were just going to be very far ahead. Yeah, I think I think this is a fine keep. It's probably going to get shredded to pieces, but it's it's fine. Like, we, we have, like, multiple good cards in our deck, in our hand. That's kind of what you want. Uh, 
This is actually a super annoying card <laughs> because it takes the counters from your explosives and it really messes you up. It's it's super random how how awkward this hand is, this card is for us. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna play the the bounce the the amulet here because if I draw a bounce land, we're like uh, actually I should have played it off the basic forest. That was a mistake because now if I draw Boros Garrison, I can't Azusa next turn. So that was definitely a mistake. They probably had familiar by Brickton third line. Yep, um, this is game three. Uh, but um, like one from later is not gonna beat me. Like you need a clock. I can very easily beat beat fulminators if you're not clocking me. Uh, yeah, so that that was that was a bad punt on my side. I should have gone with Forest on one. Totally gonna all oh, right. So we're we're just too good at this game, fortunately for us. Uh, I could play EE on one. I feel like I'd rather just make my land drops. Just hold the explosive in hand. I don't, again, I don't want to expose it to the Hex Parasite. But this means that my opponent needs a discard spell and to use the Parasite. Why not play T West instead of Forest? Because uh, I'm I want to have more lands in my hand, and more more lands in play because exactly of this. Yeah, now now of course this backfires because of the Liana, obviously. But um, if I um, if I had wait, what, when was I at twenty three? <laughs> Poggers. Hmm. Why was I at 23 life? I gained two from the fountain. I'm confused. Oh, I played this twice, I'm stupid. And I got attacked for once, yeah. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. Um Yeah, we're looking good here. Uh so we can transmute for a pact here. So my options are transmute for backed, play T West and pass. I'm kind of a fan of that. Actually, I'm kind of a fan of play T West and pass. Uh, play T West and play explosives on two and pass. I kind of like that line. Because uh, basically, I don't want to get owned by another scholar. So I think I'm gonna do that. Because the scholar exiles, he doesn't discard. So I am going to do this. So now, if my opponent does play another scholar, the Liliana is still blanked. Unless they have like the soul read and they're gonna hex parasite my thing. Taking three here, very comfortable doing this. Very comfortable taking three here. We could have tightened. I, I am very well aware that we could have tightened here. Oh, we couldn't set up the, for a titan, but then we would get owned by a discard spell. This is this is nice too. We can still like transmute for explosives on three if we want to, which is nice. We can crack and dismember uh, like whatever we want. That's also nice. <clears throat> I 
Fulminator Mage. That is fine. Now we get back our dismember. That's actually kind of a sick draw. Copy here. So now this forces my opponent to blow up the Fulminator. Play Azusa. I know that I'm bouncing the actual bounce land as opposed to the to the Vesuva. I wonder if my opponent realizes that they need to like blow this up now. So it's four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. So we only have access to five mana. Huh. They don't do anything. So unless they have another Fulminator, we should be in a very good spot here. Yeah, they want to chump and then sack Fulminator. But we have Ramin up in our deck here. And Ramin up is going to be huge. In fact, do I pack for Ramin up? No, I, I can't pack for Ramin up because if I die to a second Fulminator. So I have to wait a turn. So we're going to see what my opponent has. And I'm probably pitching this member to the Liliana. Unless they have a discard spell? Scholar. All right. But this means that now they get the dismember. And in response to the Lily Plus, I just packed for... I packed for an, a second Bailoth. And then I pay I pay for back to my turn. Easy. This is fine. Basically, I don't want to die to a Damping Sphere, right? Like, that's why I'm doing this. I don't want to die to a Damping Sphere or another Fulminator Mage. Like, my opponent needs to make a decision now. I guess they could have Unearth. Unearth would be a problem. Guaranteed. But if they plus, then I cannot get Unearth. And if they don't plus, then I don't need to back. So, we're fine. I I guess the opponent could minus and then I would sack the Bailoth, obviously. Because Ramin Up Liliana uh, Ramin Up Azusa basically just wins this game. Tons of decisions this game. Unearth. Yeah, I knew it! I knew it! I knew it. That's so good for them. Yeah, that is that is definitely like by far the best thing that could have happened to them. By far. All right, Rami number off the top. Give it to me. Steerings. Okay. Um. I guess that's some lands. Uh, that unearth was actually, yep. That unearth was actually pretty, pretty huge. Still, opponent does not have a threat though. All 
All right. So my opponent had the perfect possible, the perfect possible sequence. Let's see if they can capitalize on it. They probably plus here. Oh no, they they draw first. You know. I guess that they don't want if they exactly they don't want if they want a minus here. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna sack the Asusa at this point. If we draw exactly right, I mean, then we're in trouble. Or if my opponent draws exactly the perfect, yeah. So my opponent has been running, is been drawing runner runner perfects basically. Yeah, and we get so punished for my line. We get so absurdly punished. Like if I had a, if I had an Asusa here. That was, by the way, that was an insane draw for us. Like, let's let's not <laughs> let's not ignore the fact that this was an amazing draw. But that being said, like my we get very punished because of our like this was our, our like one like basically keeping the bail off alive is much better if my opponent doesn't draw exactly a shadow, which they did, and we don't draw exactly ramming up we, we did. So <laughs> like. We were we were working with very small percentages there, and somehow it worked out for my opponent, which is crazy. The attack? Oh, that's greedy. We're definitely not blocking. Do we have lethal here? So I see me girl's chamber, bounce T West, that's three mana, transmute, explosive some two, crack, get back this member, we're one mana short. We're one mana short. Uh, that's option number one. Option number two. We can transmute for explosives on one. Crack it. Hmm, it's actually not easy. We can transmit for Asusa, make a bunch of land drops. We're one minute short of that uh, line, Epic Divine. Because we need we have one, two, three to transmute, one, two to play explosives and two, one, two to crack explosives, and then we can't we don't have the one mana to this member. That is exactly the line that I was thinking of, but we just don't have the mana for it, unfortunately for us. If we pay three, transmute for Asusa, play the Asusa, replay T West. We only uh, we don't have any more pacts at that point. Hmm. I kind of would prefer to not die to a Timur Battle Rage. That is what is uh, what is kind of encouraging me to transmute for explosives on one. I think I'm going to transmute for Chameleon Colossus. We don't die to Fulminator because they destroy one of my lands and I still have enough to pay. We And we set up lethal for the following turn. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm going to go for the Chameleon Colossus line. A suicide into Explosives for 2 is definitely a line, for sure. Do I have enough mana? So 1, 2, 3 to transmute. 1, 2, 3 for Asusa. 1, 2, 3, 4. 
five. No, that we don't have enough. Like we can play the explosives on two, but we can't crack it. So transmitting for Azusa is not really an option. So whatever it is, it definitely starts here. I think I'm going to go for the Colossus line. I guess that we get wrecked by Path to Exile. But that's literally it. I guess Damping Sphere also kills us, in my point is playing that. We have not seen any Damping Spheres. And I guess now the Bailoff can actually serve. Probably for all the chumps. There's definitely a couple of plays that kill us here. We survive Timur by the Rage, but we die to TBR plus Path. Path uh, would also be a big problem because of the Colossus. Easy sack bail off there. Not even close. Second Lily, maybe? Ranger Captain. Okay. Yeah, Bailoth did a lot of work. Bailoth really did a lot of work there. Interesting. Do they have the land? They don't. All right. So now, Hmm. Yeah, so I think that the line is going to be just play T West from the yard and pass the turn. We cannot really die from the shadow here. If my opponent spends their turn playing Giver, next turn we're going to transmute for. Explosives. And then we're going to play it for one. We're going to crack it. That's going to kill this, this, and this. Then uh, my opponent's going to need to chump with the Ranger Captain. And then it's going to be basically Scholar versus Chameleon Colossus Excavator. I guess my opponent could technically be like super smart and like sack the captain on my upkeep or in response to my transmute. That would be some next level shit right there. Yeah, if, if, if they do that, they that would be some next level stuff. But they need to they need to do that before they know what I'm transmuting for, right? Let's see if they upkeep it.
you do it. Yeah, I mean, but but you know what we're what we're up to. Yeah, my opponent knows what we're up to as well. So they're trying to give themselves the out to join TBR, basically. Hmm. Can Vesuva Fountain So I guess we just die to TBR here if my opponent has it because they can 18 us so I can attack opponent chumps with the parasite. Chump with the parasite. I can't transmit for a field because it's not active. One, two, three, four. This game has been super hard. Oh, I guess... Oh, uh, yeah, we, we do die to, to TBR. Okay, so if my opponent has a TBR, I just die. Is there anything that I can do to stop a TBR? I don't think so. We don't have blue pack. This is post cyborg. Blue pack is literally the first card to, to side out in this matchup. Uh, we could go for copy silent clearing. That, that sacking of the Azusa was kind of brutal, actually. I think I'm going to go for a copy silent clear in here. And because we're nowhere close to to getting... We're nowhere close to getting... Um, to getting field active, I, I, I can safely sack it. Um, so we basically died to TBR. But we beat most anything else. So my point is on TBR or bust. Oh, they shocked. That's so bad for me. That's probably that probably means I'm dead. Uh, we don't have GQ. GQ is one of the lands to go. Uh, Cloud Scraper, we could have just transmitted this, right? We're, we're e -E in for one, but my opponent had sacked the Ranger Captain. So... All right, so this probably means TBR. No? Okay. Do they have another Angrath Rampage? I just sack this. E for one, kill them. Yeah, this this game has been crazy. Great game. This game has been like absurdly close. <laughs> game one, we just got destroyed. Game two, they got destroyed. Game three has been insane. So many close decisions. It's been awesome.
second on Earth would be... I guess it would be pretty good for them, yeah. yeah. Damn adding with that Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much. Welcome back for the fifth month in a row to the Primetime Stronghold. And GG's. GG easy. So, Vesuva. Copy bounds. We didn't really need to do this, but just, you know, for value. Explosives. Do this. Crack. You got it. Pro green. Yep. No bad matchups. Hashtag no bad matchups. The truest meme. The truest meme to ever, to ever happen. Teeth Worms sharing one more time that Twitch Prime love. Thank you so much for the support. <laughs> Yo, Bullets Fly, we beat Mill the other day, all right? So, clearly, the deck has no bad matchups. Oof, that was exciting. That was an exciting game. I really enjoyed that. The second first of Vigor in your board response will the Ursa decks running around? Uh, yes and no at the same time. Uh, force has been overall very good. And I have been happier with the second force against decks like Eldrassi Tron and Actual Tron. Because now all of them are just uh, jamming for current grade creator. So first of Vigor is now more important than ever in those matchups. It used to be that before we just like played one just to like blow up an O stone or something, and now they have like uh, four cards, so you really want to destroy those, those scenario bridges, Michael's and Lattice sometimes, that kind of stuff. What a game! Oh yeah, that that game was awesome. Really enjoy that game. It's it's kind of like pretty sick when you make some plays, you get punished by them. And then you still win because you, like, I mean, it's not like we were punished because we punted. It's just like we made the decisions with the information that we, that with the information that we had. But then, like, a bunch of things happened that were, like, the, the worst possible case scenario for the decision that we made. But we, we still got there with some tight play. I think I'm going to ship this. If any of these were an untapped source, I would consider keeping it, but this is actually very slow. Look. And this is why you mulligan with amulet. This is why you mulligan. Because you just mull into the turn to kill. <laughs> Easy, right? Easy. Oh, my opponent's on burn? Oh, yeah, they're, they're like super dead. Tell me more about how, how your deck cannot interact with with my turn two kill. What if my opponent is like next level and they kill my Asusa? I guess it doesn't matter because I just play a second one, so. <laughs> All right. We wait first, we wait first. Uh oh, OP tapped out. Alright, so now now it's safe to Now it's safe to tap to bust out the, the turn two the turn two counter. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah.
We can transmute from back to negation too for value. Oh, 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 oh. Waters Garrison, Slayer's Drone Hole. So basically what I'm seeing here is like, we're just getting rewarded for our tight play in the previous game. So Moto is like, yeah, dude, like you, you've earned this. Like you, you, you deserved. You deserve this beautiful turn two. Uh, Gruel Turf, Gemstone Mine. All of this with Pact of Negation back up, no big. Sun Home. This is my opponent trying to hope that I misclick. It definitely seems like my opponent trying to hope that I misclick. Well, that just happened. Oh, you know, uh, you know, Nap, this is, this is Amulet Titan, my friend. And this is a way of life. Amulet Titan is indeed a way of life. Just like Catholic girls. Yeah, any, any, any Sapa fans in the house, right? No Frank Zappa? No? no? Nobody gets the reference? All right. I'll try, I'll try again next time. Uh, thank you, Feno. Thank you. Thank you for for getting, for having my back there. Cash for the jack from 32 on turn 2. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just basic. No responding was a conscious choice. <laughs> Um, do we keep? No, we don't keep. We can do better than this. <laughs> Turn two bail off against burn. Turn to Bayloth against Burn. Sounds good. We're gonna talk about bannings. Oh yeah. So basically, this have been like one of the most exciting bannings announcement that I've ever heard. I really, truly had some deep hatred for Renan Six. I hated that card. It, it made all of my sweet decks completely unplayable. And now Maverick is back in Legacy, baby. I'm so excited about that. Um, should we scout here? So if I get scout, I can play scout on one. My opponent Wraith bolts it, Serum blazes it, whatever. Next turn I play tap land. Then on the same turn I Asusa and Bailoth on three. Yeah, I like that actually. And if my opponent does not kill my scout, then I'm actually insanely far ahead because I get to bail off them on turn two. So Yeah, like I am I am crazy excited. I, I basically have played no legacy, which used to be my favorite format. It used to be my favorite format over modern. And I just I did not play legacy basically at all for the past three months. Uh, because once I realized that um, once I realized that uh, my favorite deck, which is, for those of you that don't know, is Maverick, uh, once I, basically Maverick became absurdly unplayable, and I just did not want to play the format. <laughs> I just did not want to, to, to cast Mother of Runes into my opponent's Renan Sixes for obvious reasons. 
Not not much to see here, just my opponent not killing my scout and enabling me to cast a bailout on turn two. Just not, not, nothing to see here, so you guys don't have to worry about it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm super stoked to be able to play Maverick again. Super stoked to be able to play Maverick again. So my opponent's holding out, out Deflecting Palm. So I guess I start here, because if I find the Titan, this is just easy. We did not find the Titan, though. So I guess we transmute and set up for next turn. Land. And next turn, we're going to be able to play Titan, transmute for Summoner's Pact, uh, transmute for Pact of Negation, and be all set up and ready to go. I am going to serve with the Azusa on the Scout, I think. Just going to attack with the one once, get some chipping damage, get my opponent at, at 16, which will allow me to, if I draw either, I naturally draw the Titan, or if I draw, I naturally draw the Pact of Negation or something like that, I am actually going to be able to... I guess that Boros Garrison or Stronghold would also do it. So, like, I have a bunch of draws that would allow me to um, to 16 my opponent next turn with Blue Pact backup. Oh, they just concede. Okay. That makes things easier. That makes things easier. Easy! Look at me, everyone, talking about things I don't know. Yeah, so, basically, red and six, if you're a limited player, you know, Nep, um, you might not be familiar with the legacy format. The legacy format is a format that goes all the way to the beginning of, of, of Magic. So you can play cards all the way from 1993, from the very first sets. And it was a sweet format. It was super cool. Um, everything was, like, super... Uh, like skill intensive and there's a ton of decisions every every single turn there's some busted decks but there are some cards like uh, force of will let me show you real quick over here so there's cards like this like force of will which are like free counter spells which allow your allow you to interact for free so you you, you can counter target spell and you can pay one man and exile a blue card from your hand to, rather than pay its mana cost which allows you to basically if your opponent is trying to kill you on turn one you just usually the decks that have that kind of that kind of power are very susceptible to that card force of will so uh, even though you can do busted stuff nobody cannot really afford to because that card exists in the format so everything kind of like regulated itself then there was this card that got printed that is called Renan 6, which is this card. And basically, it broke the format in half because everybody is playing the card. It's a two mana planeswalker that it returns a card, land card from your graveyard to your hand, which, uh, which combos really well with. Um, which works really well with fetch lands and stuff. So you basically never miss a land drop. Your mana is always going to be perfect. It also kills it in minuses to kill one, deal one damage to any target. So it also kills a bunch of X one creatures that were uh, that were you know like a staple staples of the format. And the decks that I like to play usually play a lot a lot of X one creatures. So that that card basically made all the decks that I liked virtually unplayable. And now that card got finally banned after multiple months, and I'm excited to play the format again. So that's it. That's just a very beautiful story. <laughs> um, all right. Mono cantrip dot hand. Wasn't Bird the kind of deck who should win on turn four? Yes. Um, Burn is good at winning on turn four, uh, but we can, uh, like this deck has the potential of winning earlier. I think I'm just gonna bottom the bog. I'll put them all to six. Hmm. So do we bottom steering? Uh, I guess they only move to six. All right, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna bottom the steerings. I, I, this this um, I'm feeling the natty bog here. Ugh, punished. Say what? I was definitely not expecting that one. <laughs> I was definitely not expecting that one. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna play the castle and I'm gonna pass. There's nothing that I would find that I would like to, like I'm not, 
eager to play these steerings yet. So I'd rather get more info before I before I make any decisions. Escape shift aggro, maybe. I mean, we're gonna take four from this step links, that's for sure. This is the card that I was talking about, the Rain Legacy. Definitely way more, way more palatable in modern. Unfortunately for us, it wrecks our current hand configuration, though. Uh, I think I'm gonna get the Radium Fountain here, and I'm gonna hope to find a bounce land with this. And we totally whiffed. We still need to find the prime time here. Oh, I should have gotten the forest there, because now I can't castle. Yeesh, that's a bad play. Yeah, that was yeah, that was really bad. Ugh. Whew, look at my opponent going off there with that steplings. <laughs> Just don't mind me, just taking eight here. Just casually taking eight from this stupid step links. Oh, they pinged me. Interesting. Well, that's a Titan. Play Azusa. So we're going to sequence my lands like this, obviously, so I can bog them. And, and now I have one untapped source that I can that I can use. Also, my opponent is shocked for no reason. Maybe they're playing Shadow. There's no way they're playing that Shadow over there. Like, there's no way at all that they're playing that Shadow. We could actually play the Lynx. Lynx, Asusa, Bounce Land combo, huh? Huh? Right? One mana, six, seven? <laughs> I mean, we're going to be chomping that Lynx, right? I don't think I can afford to take a bunch of damage from that Lynx. We're gonna tighten now, we're gonna get a feel. Oof, don't five. Things are getting dangerous over here. <laughs> yep. I hadn't seen a random six in a while, but we, we just summoned it. Nakaddle. All right. So we're going to pack here, I'm going to get Field of the Dead, and probably a Vesuva, copying my Radium Fountain. If I had gotten the second, uh, the second green source, we would be in a much better spot because I would have been able to play another land, have another green source, gain some more life, and also be able to replay the Fountain without needing to waste a Vesuva on it. Yeah, we're at, we're at five though, it's so low. I think I need to go up to seven here. So we're not gonna be able to Titan next turn, unfortunately. If my Titan doesn't die though, we might be able to be in a fine spot though. No bolts. Yeah, the, the fountain is already in play. Larga vida Maverick. Yo lo empecé a jugar con Viales. Las primeras listas. Que versión prefieres de Titanes? Carn o esta de ahora? Esta de ahora, que wedo. Eh, puedes apretar eh, exclamation point deck. Esta es la lista que, est que estoy jugando en Magic Online. Eh, si estuviera jugando en Open Field, 
quizás eh, no juego el Chameleon Colossus, pero hay muchos en... Hay mucho Death Shadow, Quixie Shadow en Magic Online en este momento. So the path to exile is not the end all be all because we get one free zombie, so we still get to chomp. But yeah, I, I'm not loving our spot still. I don't think we are in a great I mean, basically, I think that there's multiple ways that we can die from here. But most of those ways involve the card path to exile. Or me blocking one of my opponent's threats and then having a lightning bolt to, to clear this titan. Because if I, if I miss my land drop, I'm going to be spending my turn to pay for Pact. And we all, and we are not gonna be able to to cast something else. So if I miss my land drop, then my opponent is going to be able to attack through very easily. My opponent is really tanking about this decision, though. If I get to untap and my Titan doesn't die, then I think we're going to very easily win. Like if, if basically if I get to attack in my Titan, we're gonna we're gonna be fine. Uh, uh oh. So they can only cast it with plus two. So if I block here and they cast it plus one, ping and bolt, I die. So that is probably why my opponent is tanking so hard about this turn, because there are probably some blocks that actually kill me here. Beber mate, yeah, Yamsk. Yeah, we're drinking so mate, but I learned my lesson. I, I don't know what I don't know what the problem is with my like my new headphones, uh, my new headphone setup, so it makes like way more noise than it used to. So, yeah, so I guess that I'm gonna block here, block here, block here. Uh, there are multiple scenarios that just kill me here and they're probably gonna kill my Titan as well. But, hmm, I wonder if there's a way Because this represents more damage next turn, so maybe I can block like so? So they go plus one, three, yeah, so I guess, yeah, so I guess that this is a better block. So the, the Nakatl can trample, so if they have a bolt, I just die, I cannot be the lightning bolt here. Nakatl can trample through for one, so that would be two. No, I actually survive. Yeah, I mean, they, they Labni Mold would answer my prime time, though, because they can grow the step links for one and then bolt it. Okay. So two two trample through. My opponent does have the lightning bolt apparently. Oh bolt titan plus okay, so this is actually not as bad. Yes. Rule. Not finding a basic forest that one time is gonna cost me the game. Yep. If if I had found the basic force instead of this stupid stronghold, we would have won this game easily. I honestly did not think about that in the moment, and just like peeing the wrong land with that uh, with that ancient steerings cost me the game here. 
Because now they actually have lethal on board, right? All right. But that beats. If we had found any land that I can that I could trigger a field with, we would have been in a better spot, but we didn't, so we just died. Brutal. Um, no, I don't think I actually want a redundant field. I do want explosives. I do want bailoths. Did bailoths actually look insane here? Um, maybe a couple of these members. Shape pact, shape bog. I actually would rather shape ghost quarter over bog, I guess. And you see why I like to cyborg some number of, pack of summoners packed in the aggro matchups, right? Like, uh, it's so important for us to like stay ahead. I'm gonna cyborg out some scouts because of Renan Six. Um, it's so important for us to like try to stay ahead. And I'm gonna leave in one Rex Age because of Damping Sphere. We don't know if my opponent's playing it, but like I'd rather hedge a little bit. And uh, it's important for us to stay ahead and Summoner's Pact doesn't help us. Like Summoner's Pact is, uh, actually inquires into a very, very uh, problematic tempo hit, right? Like we need to uh, to take a very big tempo hit in order to, to be able to pact. I think I'm gonna keep this hand. My opponent actually was very smart. Like they, they played very well that game, so. They, they definitely deserved it. My opponent played well, and I made a, a crucial mistake that ended up costing me the game. So it's can't get too upset about losing to you know your own mistakes. Just gotta learn from them. Just you know take a step back and try to see why that was that was a problem. All right. Mm. So we do have a Titan in disguise here, but I'm, uh, I think I'm actually going to take the Titan. Uh, we really, really need to find uh, an untapped source so we can, so we can assume zone three. Well, turn one untap land and like do nothing. It's a great, great thing for us. All right. So yeah, we can't really play around Amp Sphere here. So I'm just gonna do this. Then next turn we're going to Asusa and set up a Titan for turn four with this member into with as interaction, which is nice. I guess we, if we Asusa, we don't dismember. So never mind. Yeah, this is why I kept in the Rex Age. Ren and Ticks. We could pack for Sage if we wanted to, I guess. Of course, I did not cast steerings because I can't, right? So, just pointed that out. Uh, Asusa eating the Lightning Ball is not bad for us. So we have a Mesa in hand. It's unfortunate. So we're gonna try to find. There we go. Untapped green source. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna play the gemstone mine out this turn. I can't sage because I already played steerings here, but I'm gonna play the gemstone mine out this turn because it enables me to. Huh, what's going on here? Blood braid. 
<laughs> oh, because of the damping sphere, that's why they had to wait one turn to cast the blood ray. That's that's cute. That is cute. Um I just remember that. A tap line would be nice. Any untap land kind of wins the game, actually. Explosives would also be nice. It's definitely not what I'm looking for. Okay, so we have a couple of options here. I actually am not really afraid of this of this Ren emblem. I kind of don't care about this Ren Emblem, so I'm just going to do this, play my Bail off, gain my 4 life, and then play my Simic Growth, resetting my Gemstone. And then we're going to cast Titan next turn. If this Nakatl attacks, I think I block. I mean, if they're tapping, if they're tapping the Kessig, then I, I definitely block. <laughs> All right, so they have a canopy and a Mesa in hand. Only a Mesa. So Mesa is the only thing that I really know of. Cycle canopy again. But it's kind of hilarious that with the with the damping sphere they can only play so many spells with this run of six. All right, so I'm going to attack the Ren, but I actually kind of want them to block because we're just going to go wide around them. Like I don't think my opponent can beat this prime time. Or this prime time. Uh, we're definitely getting bald. And I guess I'm getting stronghold. Yeah, because I if I get bald and stronghold, I can actually tighten them. Maybe we can get deflecting palm though. Getting deflecting palmed could be an issue. Hmm. <laughs> Money while knuckle clearly a mistake. I know, right? Unbeatable card is unbeatable. How can I get wrecked? How can, how do I lose this game at this point? Actually, I think I'm not going to bog because the, the not bogging entices my opponent to use their turn to kill my Titan. So I think I'm into that. So I'm going to get Field and uh, Slayer Stronghold. And next... No, I, I actually can't haste if I do that. Yeah, so I guess we're, we, we can't haste this Titan anyway. So I think I'm just going to hate um, Field plus just... Uh, get a green, uh, maybe another gemstone. No, it, it, has, it cannot be another gemstone mine because I need to trigger field. So it's going to be field plus breeding pool. Yeah. Lightning helix, my bail off. Sounds good. Probably old Ren here. They can only play one spell a turn, really, though. Because of the damping sphere. It's actually hurting them a little bit. Yeah, I'm trying to think what spell my opponent could have that would stop me from killing them, but I'm struggling to find it. And this is fine. My opponent can, like, Bolt plus Helix here. But that is just okay. Like I 
really don't care. Because like now I'm going to basically leave them out of lightning bolts and stuff. And like I effectively gain six life when I already have a second prime timing here. This doesn't do anything. So I guess I serve. Opponent takes it. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Nice damn sphere. Now we do bog them. And we get a uh, Radium Fountain, sure. Yeah, but it just concedes. Sweet. Nice, nice Ren Emblem right there. Hey, Humpty, how you doing? Some with cranberries. <laughs> nice. Uh, anything that we want to change here? My opponent does have Damping Sphere. Maybe that makes me slightly more excited about Force of Vigor. Don't think so, really. I think we just present. Uh, maybe Scout on the draw is just like so much worse that I'd rather have a Force of Vigor. Maybe Tracker. Excavator? Nah, Excavator, there's no, there's no way. Sure. So this is something like this. Uh, I'm just doing this because like Scout is just so obscenely bad against against Ren and Six. It's so bad. This looks like a fine keep though. I like it. Home from work early. Oh, that's that's just value, Humpty. That's just that's just good value. No, like the dumping sphere still hurts us a fair amount. Not cattle. Probably gonna be dismembering this guy. I guess it depends on whether they they have a sacred foundry or not. Like if I only take in one from this, it's better for me to play the gemstone mine and not take one extra damage from this. What is this deck? Yeah, we're playing against like a Naya. Sue with red and six kind of thing, like a Naya landfall kind of stuff. Uh, this is oh, this is great for us. One one a cattle. Oh yeah. All right. No fetch, please. Brutal. So we're going to take... What? Ah, uh, okay. So we're going to take nine here. That's a lot of damage. Uh, I think I need to dismember this guy right now, unfortunately for me. Go down to six, which I don't love. And now our bailoff is going to be delayed by one turn too. Ugh. That plant. <laughs> Poggers. Of course, we're tapping our mana first, getting the, the land that has a trigger into play. Then we play the Azusa. And then we get full value from Azusa, guaranteed.
can chump a blood right easily. Oh, we get to untap. Uh, I feel like... Hmm. Let's think here. Can I Titan plus Bailoth? Play land, play land. I can Titan plus Bailoth. Right? One, two. Tap. One, two, three, four, five. That's... Yeah, I, I actually can Titan plus Bailoth. This is kind of sick. Do, 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 do. Two mana floating. Do they have Skullcrack or Atarkas Command? If they have Skullcrack or Atarkas Command, we kinda die here. We maybe kinda die here. This is the moment of truth. Alright, we won the life. It should be GG's. Now we're sitting pretty at 14. All right, no packs to pay for, we're, we're, good. we're good. Yeah, my opponent could have Deflecting Palm, but I have I don't need to attack. Pass my Titan, sure. After playing it a bunch, you think that 2-2 two, two split of Ridden Pool Jumps on Mine is the best. Uh, it's It's been working out pretty fine for me. Uh, to, be, to be fair though, that is in, in no small measure because there's like a very large... There's a very big lack of aggro decks mostly in the format right now. Um, like basically uh, Shadow is like the aggroest deck that you see very... very... Um, consistently and we kind of have the second bail off in there just to like um compensate for for the fact that we're playing breeding pool uh i apologize but i'm gonna have like a two minute break because uh, i need to go to the bathroom and i will be right back for the next uh, the next match of the league so don't go anywhere and just yeah just hang in there for a second all right come on opponents come at me by the way, I'm, I'm I'm currently like last league that I played on stream was with the Elvish Reclaimer list, which was just like crazy fun. If you have not tried this list, strongly recommend it. Like, it's so fun, it's so cool, and we actually five would with it on stream. And then I played another league with a very similar list to this one, and I five would again, and now I'm currently three and zero in the following, in the next league. So I'm currently. With a pretty solid win streak with Amulet. Hmm. It would be so much nicer if this were an Asusa instead of a Rex Sage. We do have a Titan. We do have ways to stall. So I think I'm gonna keep anyway. But I wouldn't fault anybody for Mulligan in this hand. I'm I'm kind of like a little bit a little bit greedy here. Why did you cut an EE in the sideboard? Because um, in the matchups that I see the most often, I was not really, um, I was not really uh, siding all three of them. I was only siding two of them, and I I've been facing just like a ton of. Oh, we're gonna get value here, <sighs> poggers. Um, I, I did see like a, a ton of uh, Grixis Shadow lately. Oh, that's a brutal draw. I think that we get value here. This is bad if my opponent has like a natural quick Karn because we're not going to be able to answer an Ensnare Bridge anymore. And I'm taking three here. Not even close. I don't want my opponent to draw a card.
Oh, they don't have lands. Oh, this is priceless. Steering. Vesuva. All right. So I'm going to serve here. Opponent takes it. Gonna aim scout here. And pass his turn. Opponent very likely just needs to trade here. Yeah, they do. I don't know why they didn't immediately. I'm tapped out and they could have attacked. So they basically missed on a free point of damage, but I'm okay with this. Poggers. So, I could go for a Titan right now, but we get got by this member. I think I do. Yeah. All right. Never punished. <laughs> Main deck Rex Sage. Hell yeah. <laughs> Got him. Ramina Tracker forces one Bailoth. Bog out. Cavern out. Uh, one explosive is fine. Shapes and scout arenas. One steerings, actually two steerings. Leave the amulets. Yep. <coughs> Main deck wrecked sage. <laughs> oh yeah, feels good, man. Feels good. Also, my opponent's serving with the reshaper. I'm like, nah, I'm good. You got it. Bring it on. Bring it on. I gave them the, like, the Morpheus hand, you know? Like the... <laughs> Bring it on. I'll take it. I take it. I take it. Finish him. <laughs> good times, good times. and taking their time with their sideboarding. All right. Sure. Okay. Removal spell, good threat, interaction. It's a fine. Unless my opponent has some kind of nutty draw. Uh, this kind of hand is, is just fine against Eldrassitron. They could have, yep, yeah, that's what I was going to say. They could have like a natural turn 3 Tron kind of draw, and that would be problematic. That is actually not particularly frightening, really. Now, third, uh, Ursus Tower would could be a problem here. Citing out all artifacts. That would be that would be pretty next level. It's been a while since you played the list, but I remember it to be good. Is it good anymore? Blakey Geary 637. 623, sorry. What, what am I even saying here? Thank you so much for that. For that Twitch Prime sub. Welcome to the Prime Time Stronghold. Thank you for the support. Really appreciate it. Uh, did my buddy not do anything there? They just played a reshaper, and then they just passed. Okay. I think I'm going to use this turn to play tracker. 
If they want to dismember it, that's I'm, I'm just fine with that. And this protects it from the from a from a thought knot. And yeah, Pichu, it's been a while since I played Ballista because uh, it's not particularly good in the current meta. Like, uh, Ballista used to be good against humans, uh, spirits. Uh, th in those kind of matchups, Ballista used to shine. In like the matchups that we see nowadays, it's just like Etron, Splain Karn, uh, uh, Ursa. It's only relevant if it can kill Ursa, which it can't really. Um, like it's just like the decks that are seen play in the, in modern right now are not particularly susceptible to Ballista, uh, which makes things very awkward. So we're going to have an interesting choice here in my next turn. I think I'm going to play Tolerio was stabbed. This will grant me a clue that I'm going to crack. Uh, but the reason why I'm going to be doing that instead of something like Simi Growth is because if I untap and I play uh, Sun Home, then uh, thanks to Castle, I'm going to be able to uh, just have Titan Mana on turn 5. Yeah, exactly, Seikoth. Um, you, we don't see Hornet Queen in the meta in the sideboard anymore. Because spirits and humans, which were the two decks that um, Hornet Queen was at its best, are not really decks anymore. And what we see instead are matchups where the second field of the dead is just like a better card than the than the Hornet Queen because you know it's a land instead of a seven drop. And like in, in a worst case scenario, if you top deck it against John, it's a land when your opponent just fulminated you. You know, whereas uh, Hornet Queen would be a seven drop that you would just end up discarding. So Field of the Dead definitely much better against John, much better against Etron. So uh, because of that, uh, Field of the Dead kind of took the the space that we used to see Ballist uh, Hornet Queen in uh, before. Opponent really trying to figure out what to do here. I wonder how many options they have over there. Another reason really to not play the T-West and play the Sun Home instead would be so I can hold up Force. But I'm kind of holding up Force anyway because of uh, just being able to pitch some respect to it. So if I like, if we get into desperation mode and I need to actually force something, okay, okay. For example, do we force this here? I don't think we do. Okay, now that I did draw the other land, then I think I'm gonna force. I think I'm gonna force on upkeep. Because this is going to deny my opponent mana. Well, I guess I can... I can. They can have their mana. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. A 6 mana that they have. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just going to let them do their thing here. Just going to let them tap. Oh, they just like... They help me out. Cool. <laughs> that makes my decision much easier. Want to try Hornet Queen over Chameleon? Uh, they... I don't recommend against it. Like I've I've played against so many um like Death Shadow decks lately. I mean you 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 could have seen them on stream, right? Um I I've, I've been playing against a ton of shadow decks and not really any humans at all. So just like you can do that if you want. Definitely uh, getting a suicide there, of course, insane combo with with tracker. And my opponent just lets me tap. I guess my opponent did not figure out what I can do here. Am I getting baited? I don't think I'm getting baited here. But maybe I can just Asusa. How do I lose this game? How do I lose this game? Feels like the only way that I lose is if I get Karned. Like if my opponent goes Tron piece into Karn. Think I'm going for this though? Maybe I'm just being too conservative and I should just be jamming. Yeah, 
it's very likely I should just be jamming. But next turn I can I can just jam super safely because I'm gonna be able to hold up Force of Vigor as well, which is kind of I I just don't want to get caught by like Karn into Lattice and then I just die to my Pact basically. Is this like, yeah, this this is fine. I don't care about this card. <laughs> Minus on the SS, sure. All right, so we I, I guess we we win. <laughs> Another force. Uh. Yeah. So the only way that I lose here, one, two, three, four, is if my opponent trans me into trans me into current lattice lock. So I'm going to prevent that from happening basically by fetching Titan. Yes, I'm gonna get uh, I guess any green bounce. And Ghost Quarter. I'm gonna bounce Ghost Quarter and replay it. Now I can draw step, destroy their I guess I can I'm gonna draw I'm gonna destroy this now. Seems better. Do I care about Eugene? I had my only lost event spirits in saying hands game stream three yesterday. I mean, but it's it's not like a like you just had like bad luck with the pairing. Right, like it's not like a, a reasonable amount of the meta. I could dismember this matter reshaper. I'm I'm not gonna though. Like the the good thing is that if I dismember this matter reshaper, then I can just kill the U again with the tracker. I guess maybe it's worth it. Karn the Great Creator. Okay, so now we're gonna clear the Ugin. Ugin dead. After Ugin is dead, now I'm gonna go squatter my opponent's mine so they can't tron me. And now I'm not really afraid of anything. And the reason why I did this right now, after damage, is because my opponent could have a dismember and then I can't clear the Ugin. And maybe my opponent is able to stabilize. I don't think they're going to be able to, though. Here, I'm super safe from not being able to pay for my Pact. They can Karn, and it just doesn't really matter. Probably Karn for Ensnaring Bridge, but I just force it. Yeah. Destroy this and this, exile in the obstinate Bailoth, we and tap. Pony concedes. Maybe. Oh, oh, they, they say L M A O. It was. They say good for you. And I'm saying, yeah, it was. <laughs> I'm like, what did they expect? <laughs> I'm drawing like a million cards with tracker while they play Mattery Shapers. <laughs> Did they really expect to win that game? Just like opponent, get over yourself. <laughs> I didn't get lucky. <laughs> I didn't get lucky. I'm just playing a deck that wrecks you. <laughs> get over it. Yeah, after after a bunch of losing with... I, I went down to like 1700 like 20 or something in rating. It feels nice to be to be back up there now. I've been doing a lot of losing in the Pioneer format. <laughs> been doing a lot of losing in the Pioneer format. That's it. I need to have a salt emote. I need to have a salt emote. Okay, so that... I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to my friend Ivan. I'm gonna talk to my forever and I, I need to have a salt emote. I, so for now I'm going for I feel like I need a Natty Bog emote. I need a salt emote. 
and I need um, a punt emote. Those are the three that I that I that I like. Sakura drives salt. Uh, uh -huh. Let's do the poll. Welcome back to the primetime stronghold, my friend. Tier one sub for three months. Thank you so much. Huh. Do we like this hand? I kind of do, honestly. All right. I mean, it's not insane. We find a bounce land here or a titan. Okay, bounce land it is. Then we have a steering to hopefully find an amulet or something else. Uh oh. Okay, that's not a good draw. But there's what I was looking for. I'm going to flash in the T-West end step. It, it will allow us to transmute if we need to. Um, I'm assuming that this is some kind of devoted Druid deck. That's that's like the first thing that I think right now in the in the metagame when I see turn one Noble Hierarch. Uh, it seems like my opponent is in some kind of like absence something. Okay. So there are absent triggers. I'm just gonna throw that out there. See what happens. Uh, if we do a Titan off the top, then we're gonna be pretty much golden. But besides that, we are basically one mana short of even if we find a silence. Yeah, you got it, bro. Yeah, <laughs> you, you you got it. You're fine. All right, bad beats. So it is the band triggers deck. Tight hollow scholar. All right. So they're gonna need to find the to pick the Rex Age here, which is probably fine. There it goes. Uh, this is actually not a not a bad clock though. Nice. Uh. Huh. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so I think I'm just gonna pass here. This protects me from another scholar and allows me to next turn transmute and cast Titan on the same turn. While also allowing me to hold a Pact of Negation in case I need to. All right. Flicker Whispid. Flicker Whisp would be kind of insane here because they are going to get to exile their own Wisp. And then that is going to... Yeah, I mean, this is the same thing. So they, they're going to blink their own Wisp. And then the Wisp is going to basically deny me my amulet for my, for my entire turn. Which is going to be really annoying. It's going to basically gain my opponent one turn. Uh, T West. Yeah, I guess I need to let this go. If I draw another bounce, I get punished, but that's like the only thing that punishes me. And my opponent is down to one card. I guess two. Yeah. All right. Strangler. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. 
Yeah, so this is fine, actually. I'm going to take 7 now. But I still can tighten next turn. My opponent needs another Charming Prince. Or I guess a Path to Exile. Path to Exile would also stop me. So we take 7 here, down to 4. We're kind of dying to this Liquor Wisp. Or that, right? <laughs> that makes things easier. Uh, can we set up Lethal? We can't really, but what we can do is we can set up Not Dying. Which sounds interesting. Okay, we still have one land drop to give. So we get Garrison Fountain here. Bounce Fountain, Replay Fountain. Move to combat. Opponent does not have path. Good for us. And now we get Simic Growth, Field of the Dead. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna bounce Fountain here. So now we are pretty protected from... Like, we can easily pay for Pact of Negation. Like, my opponent would need two Flicker Wisps in order to kill me with Pact, or main deck dampings here. So we are looking okay, as far as I'm concerned. We know for sure that my opponent does not have a path in hand. Uh, my opponent concedes. Dope. Why not uh, taking field and casting and fountain to attack for extra zombies? Because uh, the way that I did it, I guess that I could have done it the other way. Yeah, maybe it was it was fine to just do it the other way. Um, yeah, it would have it would have been fine to do it the other way, and I would have been able to get more zombies. Yeah, you're right. Maybe it was just better to do it the other way around. Um. Yeah, so they actually play some, like, um, Eternal Witness loops in their deck, so I kind of want to leave Bojukibog in there. Ghost Quarter seems bad. 28 lands. Amulet seems pretty bad. Steering seems... Okay, we can shave one once upon a time instead. And one more card. I like the Sage, but I don't want Forces. I just do one of these. Moments like this, the X feels already half. I mean, it's. I mean, it was like turn eight or something. What? What turn was it? Like, <laughs> like if we're not winning by turn eight, then what the hell are we doing in modern, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're gonna ship this. This is just too slow. Point also moves to six. Okay, ship the summon respect. We, of course, really need to find the land, right? But I have faith. Temple Garden. Okay. Temple Garden tapped. Very interesting. Hmm. Okay. I'm, I'm getting the Brilliant Point instead of another Bounce Land because it's possible that my opponent has Damp Sphere. And if they do have Damp Sphere, then I need to, like, a blue and a green source in order to destroy it. So.
collector oof that one's not particularly bad against us I mean it's not like insane but like explosives is so good against their deck that it makes sense that they're playing collector oof basically this is like a yeah they, we couldn't play around its flicker wisp though unfortunately for us that is just backbreaking that is just backbreaking but we couldn't really like we were kind of screwed there Yeah, that was that was a big flicker wisp for my opponent. That's probably going to be enough for them to to steal this one. Collected company. Another wisp. Yeah. Okay. So we're just going to concede here. It's just too much pressure. We're not going to get to like get enough going before before the, that kills us, so I think it's fine to concede there. Uh, yeah, let's, let's play this again. Collector Oof is kind of it's kind of big there. Love this hand though. Big fan of this hand. Uh, I'm gonna once upon looking for an untapped source. So I can emulate on one and track her on two. There it is. Oof, or should I get Susa? Nah, I think I should. Yeah, I should just guarantee the amulet on one. Wisp. Good to know about that one. So when my opponent plays a noble, which they do, we know to not play a bounce land into it, obviously. They could have Rex Sage and that would hurt us a fair amount. But otherwise, we can just bail off. <clears throat> really missing that Azusa now, huh? I wonder what they take here. Yeah, I guess that if I had taken the Azusa, things wouldn't have been much different because now this scholar will be taking the Azusa, and I would I would have I would have been forced into playing my bounce land into my opponent's thing. So Azusa, that's also pretty nice. Uh, p -p 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 yeah, so I'm definitely playing Bailoff here. Just like a big roadblock. Opponent, opponent can't really attack through it. Wisp. My bounce land probably, yeah. Now the question is do I want to dismember here? No, because I might want to be dismembering this this flicker wisp instead, actually. So I think we just pass. That's an amazing draw. Stephen Christ with the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much for the support. Welcome to the Prime Time Stronghold, Stephen. Um, that is an awesome draw, and I'm super happy I held this dismember now. Because if my opponent tries to go for the strangler, I super get them now. And because I play the scout, they are super incentivized to to trying to to get my strangler. So 
This is kind of great. We take four from the Flicker Wisp here. This is fine. Down to 19. And now if my opponent goes for the Strangler, we are going to be in a great spot. <laughs> really tanking about this one. Makes sense? Let's play Ficket Tapped. <laughs> Opponent deep in the tank. About this turn. Deep in the tank about this turn. It is a tough turn for them. What is the worst thing that could happen? They like Flicker Wisp, target their own Flicker Wisp. And then they have Path to Exile. I think that is probably the worst thing. Because even if they have something like Leonin Arbiter, which I they play fetches in their deck, so I really doubt that they are playing Leonin Arbiter. But even something like this would be just fine for me. All right, second Wisp. Let's see what they do. Yep. All right, so now we dismember that Wisp. Dismember here. Life, life, one. So now they've already chosen the target, so that's gone. Now they need to have had to have a silence in hand here. It's not bad. Play this. Play this. Bounce, Titan. Opponent concedes. Five. Oh. Literally in a 15 and 0 winning streak with Amulet right now. Fifteen and zero winning streak. No big deal. Five zero with the reclaimer amulet, and ten zero with no nonsense amulet. This this deck really is no nonsense at all, huh? This this deck really is not messing around. This list is just wild. <laughs> this list is just wild. It just wins. I don't know what... To, I mean, it just wins. I just keep winning. It's crazy. It's so crazy. Um, yeah. I don't really have much to say about the list. It's just awesome. It's just so good. I don't know. Any consideration for a third counterspell in the sideboard? Um, not really. I don't really see the point. If I were to play one, it would probably be a mystical dispute because of because of Ursa. But I would do. Uh, we talked about this at the beginning of the stream. Uh, I would do that in a meta game that I expect to be heavy Ursa, which I don't think that Moto is. So I think that this list is just amazing for playing in Magic Online. We have the Colossus for the Shadow decks. It, it did come up today. Like it just, Camelot Colossus came down against Mardu Shadow and it just absolutely took over immediately. Um, so 
Yeah, I think that the Camilla Cross is right now very good. Uh, the the force of the forces were very good. We played against Etron today. Uh, these members, of course, just overall just very very good. The Baylots we did play against Burn today and against Naya against both matchups. Uh, the Baylots were very very good. Like every single card has been awesome so far. In fact, the Counter Magic was were the only cards that I didn't bring in even once, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, the only card that the only two cards that I did not bring in at all were the two disdainful strokes. But that, I mean that that makes sense. It's like we didn't play against Strong, we didn't play against Ursa, we didn't play against like Scape Shift and stuff. So it just when I hear really a silly mistake I made playing this deck at a bigish tournament two weeks ago. Well, what is uh, rather rough? And while while you tell me in 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 there in in the ch in the chat i am going to tell you that if you have not already hit that follow button make sure you do so you can get notified whenever whenever i go live this is basically turned into an exclusively modern stream although with the bannings that happened today in legacy i might throw in there one or two legacy streams so if you are enjoying the content make sure you you follow uh, if you are watching on youtube thank you so much and also, you can like and subscribe and all that kind of stuff, and you can get uh, notified whenever I post new videos. Uh, so thank you so much, and I will see you in the part two. Another, we're gonna play another league. So uh, if you wanna see more amulet content, go check out the next video, which you're gonna be able to find the link to right there. Um, thank you, thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video.